Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. January the 4th, we're looking at this Thursday. The Dow is up 172, 37,601. Look at the way the Dow just refuses a, a couple of red candles, but mostly it's green, green, green ever since the December, let alone uh, the October 27th low. But what's really important about this is that you see this rectangle here on the daily chart on the left? My anticipation has been that the Dow is going to trade in this rectangle for a little bit. Uh, what's a little bit? Well, I suspect that we need to wait at least another week because we made a new all-time high already this week. That was on Monday, and that just that was on Tuesday. That implies that this candle right here, we can't talk about it as if it's closed because it's a weekly chart. Wait until Friday at 4 o'clock. If there's a doji candle and no new recovery high all of next week, then we're going to be looking at something very interesting, a high-level consolidation, saying that the 37,000 level in the Dow is going to be a real important support level, um, and we'll go from there. But in the meantime, look at this. What's different about this is look at the S&P. The S&P, a uh, green candle right now, up 8.33 at 47.13. <clears throat> has seen this tiny little doji candle at 47.9330 on the 28th of uh, December become the ictus for a turn to the downside, but not a very severe one. We've only just looked at the low that was made in the big red candle that Wednesday, the 20th of uh, December, I believe it was Wednesday, uh, of 46.9782. We've gone to 4696, uh, so we haven't even taken that out yet. So it's important to always monitor and look at what you're looking at in terms of rotation. Rotation says the Dow 30, which is not the Dow Industrials, it is the Dow 30. Dow 30 is holding really well. The S&P is weaker than the Dow. The QQQ is weaker than the S&P. It is uh, down 47 cents at 397.90 right now. That it, the nine period moving average is so close to turning down, but it hasn't. And that just says there's internal strength. Be careful. And that weekly chart, I call that a doji candle from last week. Very significant. But we have to wait to Friday because the day is young. Anything can happen. Uh, the, the market is really on a very near term position. I mean, look at this. You've gone one, two, three, four. Pretty sharp. Even that red candle on the 12th of uh, on the 28th of December. Uh, in the in the uh, QQQ at a PG says, oh, man, in four days, you've taken out a lot of days on the left side, about three weeks worth of price movement. So that says you're weak. But wait a minute. What's this? This is the SMHs down 91 cents at 165.12. Now, the high that was made with the Chapman Wave two bar reversal <clears throat> uh, on the 26th and 27th, I believe it was in December at 176.75. Very next, that's all time high. The very next all time high is 176.73, wasn't it? Yeah, 73. Two cents lower. Well, what's really important about that is that the move to the upside, especially the move that came early December from about the 156 level to the 175.86 high of mid December before it pulled back and they made those two nominal, made an all time high pull back and then went to two um, consecutive highs. This says to me that there's a digestive phase going on in the SMHs and it should impact the general market. So it has done that up till now. Going into Friday is going to be another thing altogether. Why? Because if the SMH now down only 75 cents, actually closes by Friday above 170 point, oh, I'd say 170.32 into the 170. So 140, 170.32. 
Um, and it's at 165 right now. That's a that's a lot of movement to the upside. And today is, hey, what am I talking about? Today is Thursday. We've only got today and tomorrow to go. That's going to be a big ask. That's going to be something. But what if by the end of the day, uh, I should clarify, um, we are short right from the high. Uh, we've got a, a very small aggressive short position, three times short. It, we are long that short position. Taking nice gains off today already. It's uh, from our entry point. Actually, it's up about 25%. But that's not the issue. These things move so quickly. So if the SMHs close because rallies that, that are attempted all day just can't get the traction. It's like they're in quicksand. Just the wheels are spinning. And it just what happens is if it closes, the low so far today is 163.97. If it closes anywhere under 164, that we've got one day in which to get a very big leap to the upside. That's going to be tough. I see a lot of a lot of new buying coming in from early this morning. Started a little bit late yesterday, and then it kind of continued. A little bits of buying power. How it holds is going to be very important. Uh, that's number one. Number two is within the context of the weekly chart. This is a big, very big red candle. It hasn't had red candles like this since the October declines. So it says to me where we close on Friday, tomorrow at 4 o'clock, is going to be very important for this candle. If we close into the 160, as I say, 163s, that's not so good. If we have a balance and we can get to the 167.50 area, that's going to be very important. All right. With that said, I need to just go on. IWM, Russell 2000 is up. Um, 67 cents to 19488. Uh, it, it's underneath second day. It's under the 14-period uh, experiential moving average. It just says it's kind of tied. Also, all the little doji candles at the top suggest that this is a very important near-term consolidation. Those weekly charts, we have to wait to Friday before we can even consider them. And let's just go quickly to gold. Gold is uh, up 80. Sorry, sorry. How some of you might have fallen off your chairs. Up eight at 2050. Um, just kind of sideways. It's not really going here. It's not going there. It's just kind of in a sideways consolidation. Silver. Let me do this because I've got a lot to discuss. Still, questions came in at the den and also the YouTube. Oh, welcome, uh, Bank from uh, Peru. We've had a number of people over the years from Peru. Uh, welcome. And 23.08. Uh, down seven cents in silver, just a lousy looking chart. Let's go to high grade copper. High grade copper is down uh, 0.02 at 3.83 under the 200 period moving average. We wanted to look at had a question. Let me do this on the way. Um, let's see. Um, IGV. I want to do the IGV, but I had first the questions came in. Uh, let me. All right. Let me finish up here just to say the TLT uh, down. A dollar thirty-five in ninety-seven thirty-seven. So my my contention exactly a week ago, I was saying I'm anticipating from the work of my my charts that crude oil should bounce a little bit, bonds the yield should go higher, and the dollar should rally quite strongly, um, all within a very uh, limited capacity, but from the lows of. To have shorts. Now, the other thing I want to look at is when we get back, I will look at AN because that's really important. AN is Automation Inc. Made a few key. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 207. Dow's up chapter and take a few questions out. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so uh, let me just finish this here. So Ordination, I always follow Ordination. I don't remember the name of the uh, CEO, but he's always, I've always found to be pretty straight on. Um, so he's made a peak effort, about 180, uh, about, uh, uh, what was that? What was that? April's? No, what was that? August. Uh, no, no, uh, July. July of last year. And it's been coming down since and then had a bit of a bounce. Um, it is down 33 cents at 143.02. So it's filling this gap, the gap that was made mid December from the 140 area to about the 144s. Um, and the, the weekly chart, this is a peak A right there and a peak B right there. You know, from everything I'm looking at in this, this in the left side daily chart, the middle is the weekly and the right side is the monthly. Overall, the nine period moving average is still positive in the monthly chart. Shorter term, it looks very weak. And um, the MACD has gone down, the stochastic is under 80 at 68%. Relative strength is weak. The nine period moving average is a whisker away from crossing negative, but it hasn't. So that still shows you internal strength. My suspicion is that 141.15 is the 200 period exponential moving average. You see that, that how it was resistance, resistance, and then we gapped up probably on news, maybe earnings, spiked to a D and an E, uh, doji candle, uh, all, uh, recovery high at about 154. Then it pulls back now at 142. So it's uh, 12 points down. And I think it's going to test this, and it could hug this line for a little while. So what, what am I looking at? I'm looking at um, the 141 level as the magnet. So my suspicion is that it'll get there. It might bounce there, and then maybe slide under it, and then come back. But it's going to hug the 141 level uh, over the next, uh, oh, I'd say, into next Friday. So over a period of a week, maybe six sessions, I, I'd be looking at it. Limited upside to 
But the downside, 141 is kind of like a magnet. And if it was to go, today's low is 142.01. If it had to go to 141.78, click. That 200 period moving average will just grab it, 141.18 or 141.15. So upside limited. Downside is only limited because this is your support. I would not be surprised when this is all over and it actually wants to start running again. It has tested the 138 to 137 level. That's just why I'm doing it uh, on a purely visual basis. The technical basis is that on the weekly, I want to see where it closes tomorrow because if it has a, an even deeper dip by the end of the day, instead of being down 57 cents, it's down a dollar ten. That says that weekly chart suggests it could go even lower. All right, hope that helped you. Next question is, uh, where was it? Uh, X, uh, no, uh, IGV. So IGV, this is a very important index. This is the iShares Expanded Tech Software. All-time high, 448.79 back in November of 2021. I've done my homework here on the weekly chart, made a low of 235.41. This is the big rectangle formation that turns into a large lopsided gravy cup. And it says that this green uh, inside Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line has done its job. It repelled the price. It's until it trades on a monthly basis. Sauce at 418, and it's at 488 right now. It's 30 points high. It's 10% higher. I have to consider <clears throat> that this is in a digestive phase. I also want you to mention that. I'm still going to call this a leg, a peak B at this particular point. I might have to call it an alternated uh, G slash B, and this goes to um, a C, and this becomes a D. I might have to use alternate counts in the weekly. The daily chart's in a sell mode right now. Um, I can put the sell signal, I'm sorry. I need to wait for a decisive close today underneath that 14 period moving average to see if the S, meaning the nine period moving average, closes under the 14. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Uh, I think we looked at this recently, and what I said is this technique that I call the Chapman Wave Instant Restart. We're at a peak D, the fourth highest peak. Within three sessions, there's a new recovery high. Then you can't consider that there's an alternate count, E slash A in the back of your mind, F back of your mind slash B, G in the back of your mind, C. I actually typed in C. And what did I say for the last, oh, man, it's over a year, but I've been saying this over and over and over. Yes, you get peak Gs, but don't forget that so often, especially if the MACD is strong or the 9 is over the 14, in this case the 9 is over the 14, that there's a really good chance you're going to get a brief pullback, then you're going to get your D, and then you've got to be careful. So IGV, the iShares Expanded Tech Software uh, uh, ETF, is in a sell signal very, very close. I mean, I, I'm just like a whisker away from calling it a sell mode. Uh, we'll see tomorrow. I might have to, at this time tomorrow, I might say that it's a sell mode. Let's wait for the end of the day. And that weekly chart <clears throat> has, it's on the 200 period moving average support of 388.71. But 379.85 is the 14 period moving average. And from everything I'm looking at, there is a really good chance that that 14 period moving average of 380 to 379 is going to be hit over the next week or two. That's why I'm looking. Actually, I say it's a weekly chart. So let's call it in January. All right. So um, let me sum it up. Daily, short term, negative. Weekly, still very positive. A little digestive phase. Monthly chart, making higher highs and higher lows. That's still bullish. MACD is good. Stochastics at 89%. On balance volume is very disappointing. There's been, and in, if I was looking at, some of you might have seen over the years, um, 1929, how the advanced decline line was declining for quite a while, a long time, like a year and a half or something, before you actually got your top. Well, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow, from the high that was made, the all-time high that was made right at 448.79 November of 2021. Here we are in January of 2024. This unbalanced volume has been extremely disappointing. And I have to tell you, I'm kind of surprised. Let me look at the QQQ. Well, this is interesting. The Qs also had a big dip 
But then they went almost to the high at that peak A, which is at about 380, uh, 380-ish, 379. Um, and now the unbalanced volume is fading a little bit. So that, whoa, I have to go back to IGV. The iShares Expanded Tech Software is telling me that you've had leadership in very select stocks. Uh, for instance, in Adobe, which made an all-time high uh, back in 2021. I think it was either November or October, uh, uh, November or December. And that was uh, in the, around about 700. It's plummeted down to the two, oh my goodness, plummeted down to the 260s. And now it's up at the uh, 569 level. Sell mode in the daily. Uh, and I've got, I can't do an alternate count. I've spent quite some time on this. I'm going to do something else on it. And I'm going to call this a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. And it says Adobe should take out the doji low of the week of the 29th of September, 498. It's grabbing right now in the 569 area. Wow, that's a prediction, huh? Because that's an alternate, that, that's an alternate count. Right there. Ooh, that is interesting. Dow's up 165. SMB's up 8. I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, hi, folks. We're looking at Unilever. Oh, let me just finish this before I forget. 
So let me just put you, this is Hellman's, huh? Hellman's. Uh, mayonnaise. And other things, I guess. Okay, all right. Uh, what is it known for? Let me just have a look at this here. Rexona, I don't know. Omo, Personal, Magnum, Lux, Lifebuoy. Oh, Lifebuoy. Knorr. All right, we got it. Oh, Ben and Jerry's. They took over Ben and Jerry's. Ho, ho, ho. Ben, I don't particularly like Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Jerry's. And it's got apostrophe S. All right, so let's just go back for a moment to IGV. I just wanted to finish up. I'm not sure if I was as clear as I should be. IGV um, looks to me like it wants to fill the gap in the 380, <clears throat> mid-380s. But it could come to rest in a little while uh, between 380 and 378. That's where I was sought to look. That 379, I remember, it was the 14-period moving average. That's where I'd be looking to say, Hmm. Is there a buy signal here? Is this, is there, am I looking at something that says it should go to a leg? See, is this really an alternate count at this particular point? I I don't know if I even want to put the alternate count in in the, in the weekly. And let's do the daily first. I might have to. Uh, certainly, if it goes to th under three eighty two, uh, yeah, three eighty two. I'm gonna have to consider that that could be a failure pattern. But we'll deal with that. So in the meantime, it looks great. But it does say that over a period of months going into, uh, I'd have to put it into the spring, maybe the April into June period, I think we're going to go to higher highs. And then the resistance level will be one. Uh, let's just do it month by month. 423 uh, going to, uh, what, what am I now? What month am I? Can I actually see what month I am? Yeah. Uh, March would be four, four twenty nine, and we'll just go from there. So those are the resistance levels. But in the meantime, consolidation unfolding, and the consolidation is saying that the daily chart has just given back, it's just taken away about a month's worth of trading on the left side in a very short period of time. So we need to watch that. All right, U A U L. UL is Unilever PLC. Actually, I haven't even looked at this for ages and ages. Um, Unilever. So it's basically been tra trading between like 42 and 62. But most of the chunk in the last uh, two years has been between the 40, this base that's been made, terrific base of 48, and a high that is a resistance high of uh, 50, it's called a 56. So it's right here in the middle at 45.73. So what do I think of it? Just could I take a look at it? I'm going to take more than a look at it. I'm going to say three things pop out immediately. There's a trend line in the monthly chart that says very clearly that this line comes from the height was in 2020 to the, the previous size. Yes, the next one just by a tad. And these lows that are made, this says that there are, there are trend lines that are formed that make it very clear that if at any point Unilever, this is, what did I say it was, uh, um, Hellman's, Ben & Jerry's, Dove, oh, 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 to clean the clean the place up. Claw, nice soup, Life Boy, that's a soap, Lux Magna, okay, a whole bunch of sunlight, sun silk. All right, here we go. So it's got a lot of stuff that... It, the, that the market just says, okay, we use it, but ho-hum. Ho-hum is not a good uh, technical uh, indicator. Ho-hum says nothing to see here. So monthly chart is very clear. It says a close below 43. Yeah, 46, 18, 16 is the low of October. I want to, uh, not just a low, I wanted to really take that out. Below 44, below 40, I, I'd even say 45 says there's just nothing to see here. And I'm not even sure it's short. I just think it's stuck in a range. And this rectangle right here in the weekly chart says, yep, stuck in a range. Go, no, you don't even have to go to the bottom. You can just go to the top and says, if at any point on a weekly basis, there is a close above, it's at 48.72. Any day, let's not even talk weekly. If in the next week, there is a pop to the 49.30 level, that changes the trend on the short term from sideways 
cup formation. It's actually a little bit more than a cup formation, but I'll call it for that for now. Cup formation. And then we can start tackling. You see this gap right here? Well, that's already been taken out. We went above it twice. So that's kind of negated. That means that this high, and there's another gap above it, this high of 49.31 would be my, my my left side target. So let's just draw that in here. One, go. I, I like to go up. I always say go to the, the Grand Canyon Cliff. Go, this is the low. I'm, uh, this is the high I'm looking at. I'm going all the way to that high right there. And I'm going to say, well, I, I can't take that as a low, obviously. So where would the next low be? Always, I try to find the most obvious, tiniest candle, the most indecisive candle that says, hey, maybe you could use this candle right here, either that or this low, but I'm going to use the low of the 17th of November of 2023, uh, the high of 47.52. I'm going to click on it like this. I'm going to say, all right, let's see where that takes me, and that takes me sideways to this level right here. And that just says, by the 10th of January, that's next week. What is the 10th of January? It is uh, Wednesday. Uh, about a, Let's call it a week from today. There should be an attempt to get, uh, what, what did I just do? Oh, 49 so 48.93, 93 is the level we're looking at, and this one went to 48.94. Okay, good. That's what I want to be looking at. So this is what I'm looking at. If there is a close above 48.94, a close, that is, you can't just make a new high. It needs to close above it. Then immediately I can start to look at this high of the 5th of October, which is 49. Not much higher, 49.31. But what's, what's important about this is, look, you've freed up all the resistance on the left side. And now you've got this ugly red candle right here from the 29th that goes all the way to 49.86. And then once you get into the 49.86 area, finally the 200-period moving average repellent from uh, uh, August, September, October of uh, August, September of last year becomes a magnet line It's now down instead of up in the 50 area, it's at 49.51. And that's what I do, sideways movement. Yes, it's building. Look at this, on balance volume is a little bit overbought, actually quite a bit overbought, but the stochastic's at 84%. That's good. The MACD is strong. That's good. Nine is over the 14. That's good. The 3x3 three three is, is rising. I don't know if I'm going to keep the 3x3 three three there. I just find it irritating. Um, but in the meantime, it's there, and that's kind of support in the very short term at 48, 42. All right, I hope that helped you. So, yes, I'm saying that if you are long, I would stay long, let it prove itself. If you're not long, but you're thinking that you want to get, I, I'm not sure about shorting. I don't see that much on the short side unless something really abhorrent happens with the commodities. So far, they've been going down. They're trying to form some kind of a base. So let me just put it this way. Higher highs and higher lows is the, is, is the modus operandi for the past couple of weeks. That should continue. Hope that helps. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. TBTC, which is Bitcoin Investment Trust, made a new recovery high yesterday. It's had a spectacular move, actually in the 3673 area um it hit uh, it went a little higher three days ago pulled back yesterday and now it's having a little bit of a bounce this is taken into a leg e in the uh, weekly chart could even turn into an instant restart but at this point i'm just calling it an e <clears throat> leg c in the monthly chart and this is the start of january so this is very important it's begun a new leg up a uh, continuation of the leg c so this, this says to me that Bitcoin, which I said about three, four months ago, was in, uh, was holding, using the 200-period moving average in the weekly chart as a springboard. For some reason, I never got it. We've had this before with spectacular gains from the 12s to the 58s, uh, but haven't been in for a long, long time. So here's the question, E-T-H-E. Ethereum ETF, one of, the, one of the crowd. I've got it as a peak F at 20.92. I don't know if it was exactly 92, 98. 20.98 on the 28th of December. And it's been making lower lows and lower highs since then. A nice move up today, up 97 cents and 19.85. Hey, you can't sneeze at a 5% gain. But here's the thing. A doji candle in F slash C in the weekly chart all the technicals are very strong. What I am looking at is the action itself is intimating to me that there is a kind of an arch formation forming like this, like this, that should see, and it really depends on a closing basis whether or not there's going to be, let me just make that an arch formation right there, whether there's going to be a new recovery high into the 21s, actually the higher it goes in this particular leg right now, that makes it even stronger, right? If it does that, instead of the rectangle, which normally I would draw in, I'd go to the weekly chart, so you can go a little higher, but basically I'm looking at a rectangle formation like that. <clears throat> we'll see if that works out. But in the meantime, most importantly, the nine period moving average is really strong. The MACD is being weak, stochastics weak at 54%, the on balance of volume is weak, the relative strength is weak, but that nine, you remember, call it the indicator of last resort. That's just suggesting that there's enough internal strength to keep maintaining the upward bias. So um, you mentioned that 
you're 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 long and you're holding long. I'm going to say I don't want to mess with your long position because I'm not in it, and you've got in it, and it's done extremely well at 19.89 up a dollar right now. So what I am going to suggest are two things. Number one is that weekly chart suggests holding the position is the correct, maintaining it is the correct stance. Leg D in the monthly chart, holding it is the correct stance. The short term says. Only if it starts to trade, fill that gap, and it goes to the high of the 1st of December, which was 1726. That's a dollar. That's over a dollar and a half lower. If it does that at any point in the next two weeks, I would say, you know what? Just be a little careful. That's number one. So I said there were two things. Number one is, I don't want to mess with your your stance, but you did ask me my opinion. And from the way it's looking, and if I go to BTC, which is uh, the Bitcoin futures, you see that's gone to peak E. Then within that, there's a rectangle, and the rule of thumb is that it can go to a, a higher highs and higher lows to a D, just under or just above or right on the previous high. And then you've got to be careful if it takes out halfway of the rectangle formation. Well, that rectangle formation is right there. And that's the halfway marker. Well, it has, but it's bounced today up at 1,545. So all I'm going to say to you is, based on this action, based on the doji candle, that's a long-legged doji candle that's appearing in the weekly chart, look at that, all the technicals are positive, and I drew in a little while back, I drew in this rectangle, and lo and behold, look how, how it stayed in the rectangle, right? So I think that that's important. It's kind of the benchmark, Bitcoin futures, continuous contract, Trading at 44,515. I like this very much, but I do think that it's in a digestive phase, kind of like the market, little digestive phase. So let's go back to ETH. -E. So, what would my recommendation be? My recommendation would be is on a very tiny position, just have a trading stop, maybe a 45 cent stop. It's at 1992. Just let it, I don't even know what you'd, you'd have for a trading stop. You can make it a dollar, but I would see. Make it as close as possible because if you're having, if you are taking a little bit off as money management, then you don't want to give back. You don't want to say, "Well, it's 1995 right now. I'm going to put my stop in 1925." That's 75 cents. I'd rather use that as risk reward, having a trading stop, and then it might take me out at 1991 where we are right now, having gone to the 20 something. Because if it goes into the 21 area, uh, this is Ethereum. That's that's going to be positive. Then I've got an alternate count, and A B C D F T E F. I call it a G, and I'll probably call it a G slash, maybe even a G slash D. But it's still that's good, right? So just a trading stuff. That's all I'd have on a tiny position as money management. That's all. Okay, next question came in. Um, yes, I was asked about Bank of America. So Bank of, we are long Bank of America. Took a tad off yesterday, uh, but so far we are long. And I, to me, this is a kind of a benchmark. The reason why I didn't want to go whole, just wholeheartedly short everything, and I want you to be very specific. Uh, one of the reasons is within the context of um, the, the rotational correction that I've been talking about, all I can say is that um, I don't – I don't really see a reason right now to do anything. Um, oh, uh, ESVXM has UL long as a starter position, but on the London Stock Exchange. Oh, we've got people from all around the world. Yes. So everything I said, I'm not sure that you've got the same price, but all the technical stuff that I was talking about, that applies. So yes, if you've started, it's exactly, I didn't even know that. I or say to you, if there's going to be a starter position, that's what you should do. But treat it as a starter right now. And I'd add to it on strength because this is in an area that if there's a rotation, this whole area of stuff that's on the shelf, on the grocery shelf, um, if they've lasted this long where the commodities were soaring and now have come down, they should start to benefit with price. Price is very slow to come down. Anybody going to the supermarket knows that. Um, and most importantly, what we're looking at is 
prices are going to, their profits should be um, helped. So in Bank of America, I've got an alternate count here. This there was an instant restart. You went to peak E, remember, E slash A, F slash B, G slash C. But wait a minute. Look, <clears throat> I've seen this so often lately. <coughs> Excuse me. Dry throat. This could be PG. <coughs> and you, I signal. Very tiny. Peak A, peak B, peak C. And today is a squeak to peak D and it says, oh, be careful. It could pull back a little bit, but not a big cell signal. I'll be back. Guys, I'm going to like back up breaker when I get my voice back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the 
the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, let me just do this quickly. So very quick, PK, to B, to B, to C, to D, in any pattern, uh, any chart with very limited upside, and yet it still goes very quickly to a D says, just be careful, you could pull back. Doesn't say major sell signal, just says, be a little careful, you could come back a little bit uh, immediately after the D is made. Uh, GDX is trading down. <clears throat> Actually, now it's up 10 cents at 29.86, but it gapped down. I just see this 200 period moving average of 29.80, uh, run by 29.80. <clears throat> it's like a magnet. And I just think it's kind of stuck there. And as long as the dollar is showing some strength, I and it's a little weak today, it's down 15 ticks. But overall, it's starting to improve a little bit. It just says it gives the market an opportunity to pull back. So well, the other thing is, um, if, the, if the market, all the selling, finds buyers if after three o'clock this afternoon the dow is actually holding well and the s&p is up about maybe 50 you could see buying into the close but don't see a big sell-off after three o'clock because that'll accelerate the downside i i'm looking at it more as uh, 